it really just seems to me like it doesn't matter how cool the form factor is. You know, it, it doesn't matter how great the materials are. Uh, it doesn't matter how good the manufacturing, uh, fit and finish. None of that really matters if you don't carry the knife. What is up guys? Average Gear Reviewer here back with another video for you. In this one, you know, we're uh, taking another walk down memory lane. If you're familiar with this series, it's the one where we take a look at every knife that I've unboxed in the past, starting from the beginning. And we're going through all those and I'm doing a long-term care review on all of them. In this one, if you saw the thumbnail, I'm sure you know the knife that I'm talking about. If you're not familiar with it, it is the Civivi Typhus. Typhus? I'm really not sure exactly how you pronounce that. Uh, it's the Civivi Typhus Typhus. It is a convertible fixed blade. It's a very unique knife. It's one of the few in this category. It may be the only one in this category. Welcome to Average Gear Review. But the best gear is the gear you have on. And as always, guys, welcome to the channel. Welcome back to the channel. If this is your first video, thank you so much for watching. For <laughs> thank you so much for walking by. Thank you so much for coming by. I really do appreciate you coming by to watch one of my little videos. It means a lot to me. Come back and watch another one. Guys, if you're a returning viewer, so good to see you back. I hope you and yours are doing well. I hope everybody is having a good Memorial Day, maybe having uh, some cookouts or something, spending some time with loved ones, and also making sure that we do remember those soldiers that we have lost. Um, you know, it may not be a personal thing for a lot of us. Um, and then again, some of us may know people uh, that have been lost in the previous wars. So. You know, uh, respectfully, I wish everybody a good Memorial Day today. So, uh, yeah, let's get over to the bench and take a look at this knife. All right, we're over here at the top view, down view. And, um, you know, I just wanted to say before I even get started here, I, I don't dislike this knife. I, I actually really, really like this knife. And I think it is so cool. It, it's so innovative. And it really is a... a, a just a, the neatest form factor, the most one of the most interesting knives that um, that I've seen in a while, and I think it was one of the first transforming knives that I saw. Now, what makes this one different from a lot of the transforming knives that are out there is that this one doesn't actually close at all. It'll transform between a push dagger configuration and a straight blade configuration. So it is classified as a transforming fixed blade. Um, I'm going to go through uh, go through just a little bit of the uh, particulars on the knife for you. Um, you know, just give you a kind of a quick overview of it. Um, it does have, looks like it's about a two and a quarter, maybe, well, it's listed as a 2.27 inch blade. It is a 14C28N. Nice little blade on it, a uh, drop point blade there. It's nice and thin and slicey. Um, it has a 3.98 inch handle. And it is clocking in at just a little over six inches. About six and a quarter looks like. Six and a quarter inches there. So that gives you an idea of the size. It's not, not a very big knife at all. And, um, you know, when it's folded up into the push dagger configuration, it's, it's even smaller. Just the, the detail and everything on the handles is really nice. It's got a really good textured G10 scale, and then it does have these cutouts here. They're, they're actually tactile cutouts, and it, it feels very good in your hand. I mean, you can get a really good grip on it. Um, one of the main things that, and it'll be one of the first things that most people notice about this knife is there is no locking system on it. It, it does not lock. It doesn't open, it doesn't lock in the open position. It doesn't lock in the closed position. It is, and I think that's why they call it a transforming fixed blade. Um, because the blade is fixed, it does not fold away. So uh, you can't classify it as a folding knife. <laughs> um, it is light. It's 2.8 ounces, just a little bit over that perfect ratio that you look for um, in, you know, blade length to weight. But 
The armature, I believe, probably adds a lot of that weight to it. These, it's got these big G10 pieces on it. And one of the interesting things about this that they don't really tout about it is it, it is just two integral pieces of G10 there um, and just formed together really nicely, really well. Um, yeah, I, I, I love the look of it. All right, my dogs were wilding out there for some reason. I, I don't know what the heck is going on out there. Um, you'll notice it doesn't have any kind of clip or anything to carry, uh, you know, and you wouldn't want to carry it on a clip because obviously then you got a blade, um, uh, you know, just in your pocket there and that's dirty. So you can tell I've been using it and carrying it a little bit because, uh, it, it, it's dirty and, um, you know, that's, that's just the, uh, struggles I go through for you guys. Now this knife, um, does come with a sheath. And I will say the, the leather sheet that it comes with is really nice. It, it's a very thick, nice stitching on it. Um, I don't like that the only option is a belt loop back here. It has a leather loop on the back that you can put on your belt. I, I don't, I'm not a big fan of that. Uh, and you'll notice in here also inside the sheet, when it comes from the factory, it's only made to carry right-handed and, and you can't switch that. Uh, and also you can't carry it in the open position. You can only carry it in the sheath, in the push dagger position. That's one of the biggest things that I don't like about this knife. Um, but I'll get into that in a minute here. <laughs> uh, snaps down. Uh, but like I said, it only carries right handed. So I did notch out a piece here myself. I know it looks ugly, but it does work. And it actually allows you to carry it left handed. Because to me, this is not really a main knife. Uh, it's not something that I would carry as like a main blade. Uh, to me, it's more, uh, you know, it's like a backup knife. It's like a last ditch knife, a small arms retention knife, something like that. It's, um, you know, it's just the way that it's designed. It just lends itself to that kind of application to me. Now, in this straight form factor here, you can use it just as any other knife. I mean, it works very well. Um, and it's very sharp. It cuts good. But it doesn't lock. And that's a big problem for a lot of people. Um, and so I'm just going to get into the four things about this knife that I, I, I think really just kind of stopped it from being one of the great EDC knives. Uh, and the four things, for one thing, it's hard to categorize. The knife is hard to categorize when you're looking at knife categories on say DLT trading or blade HQ, anywhere like that. It's hard to find a category for this knife because it's really sort of a cat in a category of its own. It's, it's a transforming fixed blade. You know, um, it's not a gravity knife. It's not a push dagger. It's not a straight blade. It's not just a regular fixed blade. So that for me, I think is one of the things that made it hard for people to sort of talk about. It makes it harder for reviewers to talk about. It makes it harder for people to search up. And a lot of times people don't know to look for that if they're trying to find that type of knife. They don't know what to call it. They don't know how to categorize it. So I think that's the first thing that sort of in a way stopped it from being as great as it could have been. The second thing. The name is hard to pronounce, which is not a big deal in the knife world. I get that. There's all kinds of, you know, really strange and weird names out there. Um, but it is hard to spell. And I've seen it spelled several different ways on different websites. And so it just, that's another thing that it, it makes it harder to talk about the knife. Am I reviewing the Civivi Typhus or the Typhius? I don't know. I'm just kind of having to try to, you know, pronounce it as best I can. And I'm sure somebody in the comments down here can correct me and let me know which one it is. So, yeah, before somebody has a chance to correct me in the comments, I did a little bit of research on the knife. And what I found out was really interesting. Uh, the word Typhius, actually, and it is pronounced Typhius. It, uh, Typhius was the son of Gaia and Tartarus in, in Greek mythology, by the way. If you're not familiar with Gaia and Tartarus, Gaia was the goddess of the earth or sometimes just considered the earth itself. And Tartarus was another word for Hades. So this Typhius was, was a, a hundred dragon heads and they all spewed fire. Um, and he uh, also had a loud, like a hundred loud bellowing voices. Um, so obviously I guess he was not a great dude. Um, and it says that he actually fought Zeus and he fought Hercules apparently. Um, 
And one account read that he was, uh, that Zeus defeated him and he like buried him under a mountain. Uh, another one said that uh, Jupiter beat him. So I think that would depend on if you're looking at Greek or Roman mythology there. But anyway, I thought that was super interesting and I had to throw it in the video. So uh, yeah, let's, let's get back yes. to it. But you know, when you make a knife uh, that's very unusual, hard to categorize, has a weird name, you know what I'm saying? You're, you're, you're already cutting off a, a portion of people who might see it and might like it um, because you don't have a lot of people that are talking about it because it's hard knife to categorize and it's not very popular. Um, one of the biggest things I think that killed it for most people is the lack of a locking system. And I haven't had it for a while and looked at it. It just seems to me like there's all kinds of places where you could put a lock on this. Uh, you could do some sort of locking system back here on the spine, maybe back here behind this. You could do uh, a locking pivot, maybe. You could do some sort of button lock on the scales up here. I just think that there's a, a really a way, and I might work on it, see if I can figure something out myself, because I like just trying to do weird stuff like that. But, um, you know, just find some way that you could make it lock into either position. And I think that would have sold a lot of people. I know a lot of people are hesitant about this knife because they think it's dangerous. And I totally get that. When you're holding it back here, the pressure of your hand, if you're gripping it like this, it does hold it closed. And it, you know it's going to be really hard for that blade to fold up on you. But if you're doing more finer cutting things and you put pressure on the back of this, it does tend to just slip up like that. Um, so, you know, that's just a security thing for a lot of people. They, and myself included, I don't carry this knife a lot. Um, the reason I don't carry it is because the number four, but I'll get into that here in just a minute. But the locking system, I think, is really one of the biggest things about this knife that just made people go, nah, you know, it's, it's just not for me. I know a lot of people have them and really like them. And, and I, for one, don't mind the fact that it doesn't lock. That, that really doesn't bother me as much. Although it just seems like a strange omission on, on a knife like this. Like, why wouldn't it have some kind of locking system? But uh, I believe even the Wii knife that this was based on, it, the Typheus, it, it doesn't have a locking system on it either. So it's not some way that they just tried to maybe cut costs or something. It's just, it's just one of those odd design choices that sometimes you just wonder why. Um, for myself personally, I'd like to have a little jimping back here. Maybe not on the blade itself, but just on the back of the frame that would allow you to sort of lock in a little tighter. That would feel a little more secure to me. Um, but I've noticed on some of Civivi's knives, they don't put any jimping on them. And I think that's probably a design choice. Um, it's probably an aesthetic thing, maybe. I, I don't really know for sure. Civivi uh, would have to answer that. Um, and if you guys watch this video, let me know. Um, the one thing, and this is the fourth thing I'm gonna get into, and like I said, I don't hate this knife. I like it and I really want to carry it. I would really love to carry this knife, but it makes it hard. Um, they made it hard for you to carry. For one thing, I know a lot of people might like sheaths and I don't mind sheaths on a fixed blade knife. I, I don't mind them at all. And I understand that that's a, that's a necessary evil. You have to have a fix, you know, if you have a fixed blade, you have to have a, a sheath to put it in. Otherwise you're carrying around a live blade all day. So I get that. What I don't get is why they used a leather sheath instead of a Kydex, which a Kydex would have been, I would think, cheaper to produce um, and more secure. My thing is, this is this knife's designed to be quick deploying. You know, any any kind of push dagger, in my opinion, it's something that you you need to grab and get to quickly. And this sheath, you just can't do that. Um, and I know some of you guys out there are going to tell me, oh, man, you can pop that thing, get it in your hand really quickly. Yeah, you probably can if you get used to practicing it. Um, I don't like to have, I, I really like to try to eliminate fine motor skills from any type of combat equations. I don't like figuring in that I'm going to have to unsnap or unvelcro or, you know, open or whatever. I would rather have something that's just instantly acceptable. You can grab it and get to work. So for me, this kind of putting this kind of sheath on this type of knife just doesn't, I don't get it. It doesn't make any sense to me. And it, uh, you know, last year I did a video where this knife actually made one of my five least carried knives. And if I made that video again today, this knife would be on it 
and and that's with me admitting that I love this knife. I, I really do like this knife. I think it's so cool. And it almost makes me mad that I can't carry it. It really does. Um, I'm going to try to find a Kydex sheath for it because I think with a Kydex sheath, this knife would be just incredible. I, I think it would be incredible with a Kydex sheath. Like I said, I don't mind the fact that it doesn't lock. I don't care that it's hard to find or hard to spell or hard to pronounce because I don't need it, you know, in my hand, I don't need it to spell or anything like that. I need it to do what it will do. And I think it will do that very well. I, I don't have any qualms about the lack of a safety on it. It really doesn't bother me. Um, I just think it would be a cool addition to it. And it seems like an odd omission, but again, it, it doesn't bother me. I don't mind a fixed blade at all. Um, so, you know, having said all that, it, it's not a knife that I would recommend as like an average everyday carry knife. It, it's a very, it's a very unique type of knife and, and it's, you just have to sort of conform your carry to it or conform yourself around the blade. Uh, for me personally, I like things that I could just conform to my carry and not have to change up a whole lot. I, you know, it's not something that I, that you can carry without a belt on. So if you're wearing shorts or something, you can't carry it. Um, I don't know how you would put a different type of clip on this. I'm sure there's a way I could mount some screws through the back of the leather or something and put like a, you know, an ulti clip or something like that on it. But barring, you know, major modifications to the sheath, which I already had to make to make it work for left hand carry, you know, it's just, it, the sheath kind of makes it a no go in my opinion. All right, wanted to do just a couple of little cut tests here. You know, just to uh, check the sharpness of the knife down. This is factory edge. I haven't touched this. I haven't touched the edge on this knife at all. For my reviews, I like to keep them untouched as long as possible, if possible, unless they get sort of damaged somehow or they need a little touch up. But generally, I try to keep the blades factory um, so that I can give you a good, you know, sort of ex estimation of what it's going to be like from the factory. And, uh, it is not just super sharp. Um, I don't, you know, I don't believe that this knife, the design of it, I don't think it requires it to be super sharp. It is pretty slicey. It seems, the edge seems a little toothy to me. Uh, let's take a look at it up close here. It just seems a little grabby. And, you know, again, it, it, I have used it a few times and, you know, maybe I need to uh, touch it up a little bit. I can't really tell. Let me know in the comments down below because I can't see it. I'm having to show it to the camera and I've tried to see the screen, but I, I really can't. So let me know in the comments down below if it's sharp or not, how the grind looks. Um, let's see. Maybe I have dulled it using it a little bit, but I, I really haven't used it a ton. I'll try some cardboard. Okay. Man, it gets down on some cardboard, that's for sure. I'm not having to put a whole lot of pressure at all there and it's running right through it. it made some fringe there but um yeah let's I, i'm really not sure what to compare this knife to i wanted to do some size comparisons um i've got a couple sitting over here i've got the uh, socp dagger which is sort of in the same vein as this knife like a sort of a retention knife or backup knife I mean, I could show it next to uh, my white horse, but that doesn't really show you anything because nobody's seen it anywhere except for in this video. But uh, yeah, that's how it compares to it. Um, let's see. Got the Red Wolf. Yeah, it's Red Wolf's a lot longer. <laughs> you guys are like, what the heck were those knives? Um, let's see. So I've got over here, I don't have any really, you know, I don't have another knife really to compare the size of this one to, so I think that's going to have to do it. Um, really, there's not a whole lot of comparisons to this knife out there. It's hard to compare it um, really to anything. Like I said, that's one of the things about it. It's, it's so unique. It almost defies categorization or convention. But uh, yeah, that's my thoughts on the Civivi Typhius. Let me know in the comments down below if you guys have one. Um, what your experience with it has been. Have you ever had any slipping of the blade, any accidents caused by that? Um, have you came across a Kydex sheath 
if you have for sure, put it in the comments down below. I, I've, I've been looking for a Kydex sheath for this thing for the longest time. Um, I did find something that sort of works. And now that I went and got it, I, I realized this would have been a good knife to compare it to, actually. The uh, CRKT SDN. Uh, just did a review on it. I, it's actually a pretty pretty close in size. The, the blades seem real comparable to me. And when I got this in, that's one of the first things I thought is, man, that blade shape looks so close and so similar that this might actually work. And guys, I got to tell you, I feel wrong for doing this. Like I'm doing something dirty, but uh, it actually will fit in this sheath. And it'll even fit in the open position. So, yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. Now, to me, this is a game changer for this knife because this is something that you could actually carry. And it's much quicker to deploy this way, although it does, it really sticks in there. That is one thing about it. Um, but it doesn't rest on the, on the blade itself. It's actually... Um, it's actually resting on the spine is what's keeping it in there. The blade isn't really touching the side there. Um, so, yeah, I mean, this does give you the option to carry it that way. Now, like I said before, it, it takes a little, a little more pulling to get it out of the sheath, but you can kind of position it in there where it will just, it'll come right out. So, you know, like I said, the, the sheath is one of the main things about this knife that just was a, a, just a really a no-go for me. And it just made us where it was something I wouldn't carry. Um, but using this sheath, I, I actually might start carrying this knife. Because, uh, like I said before, I really like it. And I think it's got a, a lot of really interesting applications, the use cases. But um, it, it, it's just, you know, like I said, if you don't carry the knife on you, it's no good. And it doesn't matter how good the materials are or how good the fit and finish is. If the mode of carrying it isn't something that you generally use or doesn't work with your carry or just doesn't, you know, really work for you, you know, what good is it? It's just a collector, um, you know, because uh, like I always say, you should always be carrying and uh, you can't do that if the knife doesn't, you know, the carry mode doesn't work for you. Um, because like I always say. The best gear is the gear you have on you. And if you don't have it on you, it's not doing you any good, right? <laughs> like, you know, it, it doesn't matter if you got a staccato in the truck. If the time comes down and you don't have it on you, it really doesn't matter how awesome the gun is, how awesome the knife is, how cool the form factor is. But, um, yeah, it, this may be a quick fix. I'm, I'm going to have to see how the blade holds up to this, and I may have to do a follow-up, see if it, it actually will work long-term with this. I just want to make sure that it's not going to be damaging the blade, basically. Um, but yeah, guys, thanks for watching all the way to the end. I really do appreciate it. Thanks for hanging out with me uh, on this Memorial Day. Hope everybody's having a good day. I uh, hope everybody's staying safe and being responsible. You know, um, if you did like the video, consider leaving me a thumbs up down below. If you're not subscribed, brother, I don't know what you're waiting on. I, what, what do I got to do? What do I got to do? Do I got to get down on my knees and beg? Well, I'm not going to do it. I'm still not going to do it. Now, we, when we get a little higher in, in numbers, I might, I might, I'm, I might, I'm not above it. But for now, just subscribe, just hit the subscribe button. If you're an OG, and I'm assuming if you've watched all the way to this part in the video, you are an OG, consider joining the channel memberships. Um, starts as low as 99 cents a month. It's, uh, you can't get a cup of coffee for 99 cents anymore. You can't get a soda for 99 cents anymore. Might as well just send it our way. We will turn it into new gear, new lights, uh, new equipment. You know, uh, trying to upgrade my phone right now at some point. I'm having to use my phone as my camera. So, you know, any equipment that we could get would help. And uh, obviously anything also, it's going to go into gears that I can review. Um, gears. Gears that I can review. It's going to go into gear that I can review and show you guys um, and just kind of give you my take on it. If you do value that, if it's worth 99 cents to you, go ahead and uh, consider joining the channel. Love to see you over there. Join the gearheads. All right, guys. Remember what I always say, always be carrying. And the best gear is the gear you have on you. Average gear reviewer, I'm out of here. Average gear review. But the best gear is the gear you have on you.